Mr. Abbas Ali. Honorable Deputy Speaker and Honorable Members of the Parliament. Okay. Singaporeans may not often talk about justice, but few will doubt how important it is to have recourse to the law to affirm one's rights or to receive proper compensations for one's work or to protect one's property or to receive a fair arrangement at the end of a marriage or to obtain protection from abuse. In our pledge, we refer to ourselves as a society based on justice and equality. To realize that pledge, I believe that justice may be accessible to anyone who seeks it or who requires it. That is why I support this bill, as it is a great step towards strengthening access to justice for Singaporeans who may not ordinarily be able to afford lawyers or seek legal help. Allow me to zone in on two areas, public awareness of legal aid and expanding services. Mr. Speaker, I welcome the move to simplify the means criteria for low-income Singaporeans in the application for legal aid, the adoption of per capita household income and the annual value of the applicant's place of residence savings and investment to replace the current arrangement which is based on disposable income and disposable capital is simpler and clearer. It will also align the means criteria to what is commonly used in other social support schemes. I also support the move for greater discretion in granting of legal aid. There are many ap applicants that are truly needy and deserving but find themselves unable to me meet the means criteria for whatever reasons. A closer scrutiny to these cases and an inclusive approach I think is welcome. The recent announcement of a website revamp at the Legal Aid Bureau's 60th anniversary dinner is another step in the right direction. I support the di digitization of the registration and documentation submission process as it will help speed up the process to match assigned solicitors to those who are seeking legal aid. But based on my interaction with Singaporeans through my outreach work with Rose of Peace, it seems that there are still Singaporeans who may not be aware of available avenues for legal assistance like the Legal Aid Bureau or the legal, Criminal Legal Aid Scheme. Despite efforts by the Ministry as well as legal awareness campaigns by the Law Society of Singapore, I would like to ask the Minister if there are any more steps that can be taken to educate the public especially those who require legal assistance but are unable to afford it, about the help, legal help that is available to the public. Perhaps our civil society and our social service organizations can play a part to help spread the word on the avenues available for legal help. I note that Singaporeans who are receiving fine offices providing assistance to these individuals and families may be equipped with the right knowledge of our legal aid services. Perhaps we can have a legal aid conference to inform and equip these frontline officers from the social sector with basic legal knowledge and the information on legal aid so that they can help their beneficiaries. It will also be a great, of great benefit to have a legal aid playbook or an online resource guide that can be accessed by the public. It is commendable to witness the progress of the Legal Aid Bureau since 1958. I understand that to date it has received about 400,000 applications for legal aid and in 2017 alone it received about 9,000 applications. Most were for matrimonial claims and probate matters. I also support the increased funding and support for the criminal legal aid scheme over the past years. These are important institutions in the provision of legal aid and access to justice. But the public often turn to Legal Aid Bureau when it's too late. When issues have come to a head or a problem has arisen, perhaps there is a role that can be played in promoting awareness of the law and to equip the public with enough legal knowledge in order to prevent legal issues from occurring. For example, 
In the area of promoting micro-enterprises amongst low-income families, the Legal Aid Bureau or the Law Society of Singapore's Pro Bono Services Office can explore working with community organizations such as Casa Rauda, PPIS and Daughters of Tomorrow or our trade associations and chambers of commerce and even SME centers to equip them with legal resources that can help micro-enterprises. In the example of Daughters of Tomorrow, it is a registered charity that aims to facilitate livelihood opportunities for underprivileged women, to build and sustain financial independent, financially independent and resilient families. Since its inception in 2014, DOT has enabled 150 women to find jobs and start business projects. Some 40% of these beneficiaries are single mothers with low education, secondary school and below. They have to juggle between caring for the children and making ends meet through the micro-enterprises, equipping organizations such as Daughters of Tomorrow with the right legal resources such as business contract templates and other relevant knowledge will go a long way to assist these women and hopefully prevent legal issues from occurring, thus reducing the need for legal aid in a small but important and significant manner. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I support this move to ensure that any Singaporean who seek justice may obtain it. It is a sign of a compassionate society when we ensure that even those who lack financial means may still be able to afford the ability to protect his or her rights. Access to justice provides all Singaporeans with the same dignity and the same fundamental right to fairness. Mr. Speaker, I support this bill.